But hello there and welcome. This is the Upside Out Show on City TV. Now, guess what? It's always, always a pleasure bringing you total entertainment right in the comfort of your homes. My name is Nana Tufo. And I am Premier Dunyami. You know how we do it every Sunday night. In fact, today we are really going to be turning your day, your night, your everything upside, upside down. down. The person we are going to be talking to is one that is no stranger to us all. But trust me, the stuff that we are going to talk about, uh -huh. you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go nowhere. Just grab something that will really make you enjoy this conversation. When we come back, we got a show. Coming up on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with celebrated and acclaimed lawyer, lawyer Chachu Chikata, on the show. He speaks on growing up, becoming a lawyer, and his biggest influences, amongst others. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. Now, today we are talking to a very huge personality, you know. In fact, when um, we decided to talk to this man, I didn't really know how it was going to pan out, you know. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, when I hear his name, mm -hmm. you know, it looks like, so I don't know him, yeah. but when you hear his name, it looks like you have to be in exactly. your best behavior yeah, you, know, you exactly. have to discipline yourself <laughs> you have to be straight up you yeah. understand and that is how we've all grown to know him mm -hmm. you know such a person that we can yeah. proudly admire you know exactly. doing wonders you know in his yeah. profession but i always wonder how his soft side will be like in fact i wonder if he has one well you know? i think everybody has a lighter really? side i mean behind the cameras off the cameras i mean everyone has a way to unwind all everyone right and so today side. we are going to know how he unwinds and you know if he's not in his wig you know mm -hmm. and putting yeah. it across and cross examining <laughs> who is he how does he even come across to people ladies and gentlemen our guest today on the upside our show is our very own lawyer Chachu Chikata. Chikata. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't even know how to address you. How should we call you? How do we address you? My good friend Neil Kai, you know, Neil Kai calls him Uncle T. Can we call you Uncle T? Of course. Right, That's so fine. I guess we can borrow that name just for this show. <laughs> right, Uncle T, welcome to the Upside Down Show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and um, I look forward to having things the right side up. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, yeah, this, this past Sunday was uh, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you. Believe thank one. you, yeah. thank you. I, I had a lot of uh, good wishes from mm. many wonderful sons and daughters. Right. And uh, we we thank God for fathers and uh, also for good sons and daughters. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Now we'll be delving into that, mm. your role as a dad and mm -hmm. all that. But how would you describe yourself? I'm sure many Ghanaians, you know, don't even think that you have a sense of humor because anytime we see you, you are very straight. You are, you are mm -hmm. too intelligent, you know. And sometimes I feel... You know, people like yeah. that, maybe you have to even calculate things that will make them laugh, you know. Exactly. Maybe yeah. anything that will make them laugh should be very academic and very that intelligent. And all. Who are you? How would you describe that, yourself? That is so unfair. I'm a very ordinary Ghanaian, you know, spent a lot of my childhood right in the neighborhood at Abraka, you know, yeah. Land's End, <laughs> it was called, right over there. Grew up with my peers, you know. Um, uh, we used to run up and down, play gota to gota, as we called it, yeah. <laughs> in the area. And in fact, in my childhood, one of the soccer stars, you uh -huh. know, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood that I used to admire, I would often be carrying his boots. Okay. When we went to play, when they went to play matches, you know. Okay. Did you and, play yourself? And no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I, I only became a cricketer, I'm afraid. I oh, didn't, okay. I didn't so back then we were a man. Soccer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would carry his boots and, uh, and in fact, you know, later on, yeah, across the, across the uh, way from Land's End where we were, that was where they had quite a, a, a large soccer park. Mm. Yeah. And great stars of old, you know, yeah. Edward Aqua and so on, yeah. you yeah. know, used to play around there. Mm. So, you know, we grew up having a sense of closeness to all these soccer mm. stars and yeah. so on. But I'm a very ordinary Adabraka kid. Um, <laughs> I, I, I grew up, um, well, Aditrum is also not very far mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Aditrum is uh, the sort of kindergarten where 
my older brother we started school and I would sometimes just follow him to school you know why, why and did so you I, I, I sort of ended up you know going along with him and and sort of being in that class I was just I guess I was bored with home, so. So, I just wanted to leave home. so was it about spending time with Fui, or it was about you liking the school environment? What exactly was it? I think the school environment mm. was mm. interesting for me. So I started school very early in the end. Yeah. You know, I was about four when I was in class one, and and you know, in my primary school, I mean, we we eventually moved from Aditrom fairly soon uh, to Mrs. Sams. Mrs. Sams was a preparatory school. Mm. It used to be where the Registrar General's department is now okay. sitting. Wow. And later it moved, became New Nation at, uh, mm. to, to Nima. Mm. But we went to Mississauga for a couple of years, and then we all went to Accra Newtown Experimental School. Mm. Now, and I give this little background. You know, Accra Newtown Experimental School is a simple public school mm -hmm. you know it's not a private anything but it was one of those public schools which was being used for an experiment in other okay. words there was an experiment where people would do common entrance from class six okay right. rather than have to go to two years of middle school and so on and we had a great headmaster who you know really kept us in line within the the, you the remember framework. his name? Oh yes, uh, Mr. Fusopi. I remember okay. his name wow. very well <laughs> and and in fact I remember not only him, but he also had his daughters in the school. Okay. And what I can't ever forget about him is that he was also very strict on his daughters. Well, he should so, be, so, as so much as he was on other students. In <laughs> fact, in fact, probably stricter on his daughters. Wow. And that taught me a lesson about leadership, you know. Okay. Mm. Sometimes when you're a leader, um, you try to demonstrate to the people who are supposedly close to you mm that yeah. they can't take things for granted just yeah. because you right, are the yeah. leader. Yeah. And, and Mr. Fusso up here was very much that. So his <laughs> daughters, you know, God help them. But they, <laughs> they had a hard time. Yeah. You know, we, we had a softer time. And for us, who were little, because I, I was really uh, a little boy in those days, yeah. and, and all my classmates were older and so on. But for us who were little, I think we, we got away fairly lightly. I mean, that carried on through my, my later years. When mm -hmm. I went to Fan Swim again, I was, I, was, I was nine then, and uh, boarding school wasn't too easy for mm -hmm. a little yeah. nine-year-old. But all my seniors were very protective of me, and okay. they really took good care of me, yeah. especially being an asthmatic and so on. They try to make sure that, you know, I wasn't bullied so yeah, much. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> go deeper into your days um, in Fan Swim. Yeah. But who were your parents? Because when I listen to you, you know, at nine, I don't think yeah. I, I will have that, you know, yeah, I'm going to ask him that. To let my son <laughs> at nine he go. He describes himself as ordinary. Who are you? You're not an ordinary child, child you know. Tell us about eight. your well, parents, your dad and your mom. Yeah, my, my, my father was working for the UEC. Uh, he ended up being a textile sales manager and mm. so on. And my mother was basically a housewife who taught us because she she'd been a pupil teacher okay. okay but she gave up her own prospects in order to teach her children wow. you know? so we were the beneficiaries of her educational interests okay. and and um we had a great time living living as i said nearby land's end it was called and in, 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 in those days, really, I mean, the, there was a, a lot of um, educational stuff going on around. Yeah. So sometimes, uh, what's the name? There was a school up the road where there were always soccer matches, you okay. know. And we used to watch some of these youngsters who were really stars of the time. You know, it was, I would say, a fun-filled environment, you know, in which we, you know, watched soccer, mm. played on school playgrounds, and sometimes uh, the, when, we, when we were in um, Accra Newtown uh, Experimental School, occasionally if we couldn't get a bus, we would actually walk from Magdebraca <laughs> to Accra Newtown <laughs> and so on. I remember all that. Yeah. And How many siblings do you great have? Fun. I have six siblings, there's okay. seven of us. Wow. I have an older brother, so I'm number two. Okay. Oh. Fui is the number Fui one. Is the number one. 
And then um, after me is uh, Chidi, another man. Mm -hmm. And then we have two girls, twins. Oh, wow. wow. And then another yeah. girl. And finally, a boy to, to also, you know. So you were at class. We were yeah. quite a class. We were yeah. quite a exactly. class. Yeah. Right, so yeah. let's, let's go back to uh, Infancy mm -hmm. and then the decision to study law after. What really informed that decision? Is this something you picked up at Infancy No, not at all. Before I went to Infancy I think I, I was determined to be a lawyer wow. because. By then, my uncle, uh, Justice Apalu, yeah. mm. who actually started his practice again, not very far from here. <laughs> it was called Omega House. Okay. Okay. Uh, d down just near the traffic lights, mm. you know. You really have ties with Adabraka. <laughs> very much so, you know. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> and he had his practice there when he came back from England as a lawyer. Mm. So I remember so distinctly. Um, really just being sort of impressed by him as, as a lawyer. Yeah. And he was very close to my parents, and my mother being his first cousin. And so that was really the inspiration. So by the time I went to Mfanspim, I mean, in fact, in the interview that I did for a UAC scholarship, mm. they asked me, so, you know, what would you like to be in the future? So I proudly said, yeah, I'm going to be a lawyer. And then sometime I'll be a judge. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this was an eight year old boy. The, the, the judge part didn't happen. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get to that. We'll get to no, that. But, but let's look at in school. This is, you were eight, so, nine? Well, I was nine. I, I entered in Fansum in January 1960. I turned mm. nine in October just before that. Okay. Wow. okay. And um, so I was the littlest boy on, 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 on the compound. And as I say, I, I had I had a lot of good protection from my mm. seniors, you know, and I mm. I love and respect them for having <laughs> kept me away from all the bullies, you know, yeah. my prefects Joy Atta and Kobe Hunter, and and um, seniors like Atu Wright and so on. So that you know, I, I've always had the benefit of people who took care of me, not only Lucky from <laughs> not only not only from home, by by older Anywhere brother, my parents, would. and so on. But in school, you know, people sort of tried to look after. They, they, they had my back, so to speak. So you remember yeah. the school anthem? Of course, Jim oh, can. Yes. So you mean, you know, no, 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 no. You know, you know, <laughs> you know in our family, yeah. we have a good division of labor. Mm. My wife has a great voice. She sings. In fact, she sings in our church. Okay. Not so much these days, but she used to sing a lot. And I'll tell you more about that later. <laughs> but, 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 you know, my voice is n not so good for singing. So I prefer to listen to her and Neil Kai and Danny Nettie. But you have Hamid. <laughs> you, you, you do remember that with them. Hamid. When no, you have Hamid, your voice I sounds think, perfect, yeah. you know. You're trying to suggest that I don't dream shakan, dream shakan, dream shakan, in Yanum. Dream shaken, dream shaken, that's enough. <laughs> 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 Where do you go to church? As we done World Church, of course, in the last year we've been doing virtual okay. church largely, but um, we used to be in the Methodist headquarters chapel, okay. Okay. but now we have a, a sort of tent um, off the uh, Independence Avenue. Mm, wow. Yes. Yeah. So, so how religious are you? Because I, I, when you speak, you are most often quoting the scriptures and all, even in courts, you know, yeah. you're, you're giving <laughs> well, some quotations here you and know, there. Yes, from Fansmim, I was in scripture union in <coughs> Fansmim. Okay. Oh, okay. And um, I was, uh, I was really, you know, very much involved from even my childhood. Um, because my father, my parents were, were you know, Christians, uh, Presbyterian, and I think they brought us up in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. And um, I, by the time I went into Franz Fim, and, and I remember so distinctly, uh, there was a scripture union uh, assistant traveling secretary, uh, Miss Lawrence Yeboa. And she came once, I must have been 11 then, and I, I, it was on one of the occasions when she 
uh, ministered to us at Scripture Union that I really made my own personal commitment wow. uh, as a Christian. And, and since then, by God's grace, through university, the University Christian Fellowship and so on, um, I, I have uh, maintained my, my faith. Mm. Uh, you know, faith is never an easy road. Mm -hmm. And yet, I mean, one thing that is clear to me uh, over the years, especially over some of the toughest times, yeah. in, like being in prison and all that, it has been an anchor, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. of my whole life. And, yeah. and definitely um, when I quote scripture, it is not for the sake of quoting scripture, but yeah. it's because of what it really means deeply to me. And, right. and, and, um, and, and, and one of the things, you know, which I was referencing when I talked about my wife singing, one of, one of the things that has always been important to me is, is really gospel music. And, okay. and, and I know that at so many points in my life, uh, various songs have ministered in particular ways to, to, to me. Like which wow. ones? And, um, I mean, the clearest example I would give is, you know, Danny Nessie has a song, I Will Worship You. Yeah. I, I Will, will Lift Up Your you. Name. Yes, you are Would Lord. You yes, you are. The and the heavens, heavens. You, are Lord. you are Lord. Yes, yeah. you, are. you are. That song actually ministered to me so tremendously when I was in, in prison uh, because somehow in that experience, I couldn't see it just being at a human level. It wasn't about me and whatever I thought about being persecuted. No, no, it wasn't about that. I had a sense that this was also, you know, where God wanted me to be at a particular point in time. Really? So that His glory and, will manifest. And, and, and so yeah. I just was in an attitude of worship. And, oh. and, and Danny's wow. song, and at that time, I didn't know it was Danny Nettie's song. I didn't know <laughs> Danny Nettie, by oh, the way. Wow. And so it was the fact that, you know, my wife had been singing wow. it in church okay. and the, the song group. And, and so it would ring in my, in my ears, in my head. And it gave me a certain calmness, a certain, yeah. you know, yeah. relaxed attitude to what I was uh, what I was going through, I didn't have any sense of anger or bitterness or anything like that. And so that, that, that has been uh, an important mm. aspect of my faith and my, my, my connection to music. Mm. I myself don't sing or I don't play an instrument, but I am I'm in <laughs> awe when I see uh, great music being, being, um, you know, being ministered. Mm. And, and again, thanks to Danny, I got to meet, you know, a lot of wonderful, you know, gospel musicians. Mm. In fact, that's how I met Neokai as okay. well. The yeah, way peace. you are speaking, you know, yes. I, I feel like I'm in church, you know, listening to <laughs> a preacher about speaking. But this is also a lawyer, you know, so I'm trying to yeah. marry the two. Mm -hmm. A lawyer and with your faith, you know, how easy it is, because, you know, sometimes yeah. lawyers mm -hmm. are defending all kinds of people and all that. And you are a lawyer, you know, you believe in yeah. God and all You're that. You're likely well, to fall in a conflicting situation. Yes, you know, no, so, no, so no, how no. do you do it? No, I don't, you know, I, I think people misunderstand what lawyers do. Well, I mean, so tell us what you do. People misunderstand because as a lawyer, yes, you're representing people, you're advocating on their behalf, mm. but you're not sort of supposed to like, you know, lie or, you know, do things. In fact, lawyers are mm. supposed to be an honorable professional. Well, you well, know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so I don't think th there is any contradiction, but, but, but I, I have to admit that Sometimes the way some lawyers conduct themselves yes. may not look so honorable. Mm -hmm. I was blessed again. I was blessed by mentors who, you know, really showed me the better side, the best side mm. of legal practice. Again, one of them was, he had his practice not very far from here. Joe Reindorf's chambers <laughs> is okay, right okay, here. Okay, okay. Right here in Adabaka. No, so we have to name it's something in Adabaka. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, very Adabaka. strong. So Joe Reindorf's chambers is right across the road. And Joe, for instance, was an extraordinary lawyer. I mean, you know, intellectually, the integrity that he showed professionally 
and and that that was always a big lesson you know mm. for, for for me but but one other lawyer whose uh, mentorship I must point to because it also relates to being a Christian okay. is, is Mr. William Oferieta, of course. You see, when, wow. when I was in Legon, I went to the Christian Fellowship, as yeah. I mentioned, and Paoli would sometimes come and speak to us. He mm. had then come out of prison where he had become uh, a Christian. Okay. And so he would be invited and he'd come and speak. And it was always, you know, just amazing because here was this person who, you know, one of the big six, yes. you know, giant figure and so on. And he always spoke so simply and so lightly. I mean, he was known to be a big orator, but, yeah. but yeah. when you were in his presence, he brought things down to the level of us young ones also. Mm. And I mean, the way he talked about even his time in prison and so on, it left its mark on me, by the way. So, mm, wow. so by the time I was having my own experience on 40 something years later, it was like a, a deja yeah. vu, yeah. as it yeah. were. But, but, but Pauli actually used to go further. Not only would he, you know, talk uh, to the Christian Fellowship, and, and I would be uh, part of the the audience. But after, I mean, we became close personally. So after his talk. He would sometimes just walk with me because okay. I, I used to be in Legon Hall. Uh, he would walk with me to my room. Oh wow! And that's my, wow. my, my, my <laughs> that's power. He wow. the great power. And you privileged. And 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 at that time he had a, an an extra reason for for coming to my room. My roommate was Duke Dankwa. Okay. Uh, okay. His nephew. That's uh, J B Dankwa's son. And so I mean, how will he? Again, you, you hear of this great man, but he brought himself down to the level of us young yeah. ones. I was wow. 17 or 16 at the time, mm. and he related to us as if we were just his youngest his brothers, peers. you wow. know. <laughs> and um, and he was a lawyer also, and and you know that gave me uh, some insights mm. into into what it means to be a lawyer. Uh, in the long run, I ended up representing him in court um, in the in the seventies. <laughs> so it looks like you knew what he was, was doing yeah. when he was when, exactly he was he was preparing me yes. to to do that. I I represented him as a junior to Mr. Reindorf, Joe mm. Reindorf, mm. uh when he was in jail uh, during that Champong period, mm. and that was that was an extraordinary privilege yeah. because you know each day that we were in court. You know, Paul Willie would have some wisecrack or some story <laughs> that he would tell, and it was it was it was always remarkable. I mean, subsequently, of course, yeah. I got to know his wife. Um, also, I, I went to his house and so on. It was a privilege indeed, and that's why I'm saying that. I mean, by God's grace, I've had you know mentoring yeah. Uh, yeah. by a variety of people who for whatever reason uh, related to me and 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 found my my interest whether it was in the law or in any other aspect of uh, the society mm -hmm. um, they found it interesting enough to want to be Let, part of yes, your life. Yes, to want to help. It looks like to, God to was preparing to, yes. a great yes. man, so to he win. at every point was putting people in your mm, way that to is very contribute true. Yeah, that to is that. Very so true. you know, people go to court. Lawyers are in court, and we all know this person killed that person. You yeah. know, and the lawyer says not guilty. And we're like, mm, what else mm. do they need? You know, I know, to convince. I know, but you see, that's where you know you've got to give us a break. If the person is charged with murder, yeah. mm. murder has a specific definition in terms of intentional killing and so on. Yeah. But you know, maybe the particular instance the lawyer is dealing with is a woman who has been severely abused over the years and maybe there was some event in the house and she took the nearest weapon. You know, I'm yeah. just giving you an instance yeah. which can yeah. tell you yeah. that yeah. it's yeah. not it's not always so cut and dry mm. that you know this was an intentional yeah. Yeah. Um, you know killing yeah. of another person. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I remember going to court. I think it was in Takradi, 
um, a long time ago when a woman was actually, you know, being charged. In that case, it may have been with murder also. And it turned out that, you know, she had a situation at home, you know, which was clearly very difficult for her. And it looks like her mind went off and she set her husband ablaze. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I, I think, as I remember, she was probably a nurse or something. Mm. And she was charged with murder. And, and I mean, you looked, of course, I was not representing here, so I don't know the story yeah. at all. Mm. But just, you know, looking at that person, you know, I mean, she didn't seem like one who would just deliberately, kill you know, somebody. kill yeah. another person. And mm. so... You know, sometimes we really have to look at these situations a bit more carefully. We're, we're very quick to judge, you know. And <laughs> so when you're quick to judge lawyers for lying and so on, <laughs> I have to tell you it's not, it's not silly yeah, fun right. and so on. It's not quite <laughs> fair to us. But, but, you know, more seriously, more seriously, I think that, um, you know, lawyers uh, try to live up to what we regard as the nobility of our mm. profession. Uh, just as other professionals, right. you know, should do, you know, whether they are doctors or architects or, you know, whatever, engineers. And, so, and, and, and I think that in all these professional lives, there are issues of integrity, wow. yes. yeah. which can have serious consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, those road engineers, you know, who do a terrible job mm -hmm. of, of supervising, yeah. um, you know, road construction mm -hmm. and end up you know, allowing sort of construction companies to get away with not doing their job and yeah. so on. I mean, that is a lack of integrity which undermines the profession. Mm. And we should be as concerned about that as, as we, we should be about lawyers, about lawyers <laughs> <laughs> undermining their integrity. Oh, I, I guess it's also because of <laughs> how we how high esteem we hold the profession, you True. know, because I think when you ask every child, what would you want to be in future? If it's not a doctor, he's a lawyer. Seven out you know? of ten. Well, exactly, yes. <laughs> mostly. I think that's unfortunate also, I have to say. Well, I remember in 2013 when the whole election petition was being shown on TV yeah. every day. I used to say to people that I'm not too comfortable about a situation where every day you know, young people and so on, all yeah. they're seeing is lawyers, lawyers, yes. lawyers. Yeah. Because I would like the opportunity for other professions to be spotlighted okay. in such a way that young people can have an aspiration mm. yeah. to be in those other professions. Because we need those other professions. Everybody mm. can be a lawyer, True. you know. But True. unfortunately, you're right that there is perhaps too much of a spotlight yeah. um, on on our profession. Mm. I mean, let's take the role that teachers play. Yes. I mean, all of us are indebted to our teachers. Yes. Yeah. You know, before you go on, there's this joke that it is only the teacher who genuinely cares about you because the doctor is praying that you fall sick, so uh -huh. they take care of you. The lawyer is praying you find yourself in, in some trouble. trouble, so they come to you. In fact, the coffin maker is praying that you die. You understand? So it's only the teacher who is trying to impart knowledge exactly. in you for you to be a better person exactly. of yeah. yourself. Yeah. And, and really, I, again, I, I, I honor my teachers from when I was young, yeah. you know. Um, I, I remember one of my teachers in class six, uh, Miss Lindsay, I, I, she passed on uh, rather early. But I remember her because that was the year before we went into secondary school, class okay. six, as I said, experimental yeah. school. And, you know, she had apparently just finished Wesley Girls mm. and came to teach at Accra Newtown Experimental School, okay. you know. And we were her class. And, and, I mean, she was one of those who encouraged you know one's aspirations to go to secondary school i mean most significantly the yeah. headmaster in infant swim at that time you know fl Bartels. i mean an incredible educationist mm -hmm. you know um i mean he was a relatively slight stature okay. but in our eyes he was huge he was just yeah. <laughs> because you know he came across in such a commanding yeah. presence he spoke well, whether he was speaking English or he was speaking Fanti, you know, and, and teachers have that kind of impact, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, on, on your life. And, and I, I, I always have to, you know, honor that. Of course, I had a very 
uh, interesting sort of encounter with my headmaster uh, because in my first year, my second term, mm -hmm. I was quite ill. I was down okay. with asthma. Mm. And he took the view that I probably was too young, to you know, at nine house. to be in, in boarding yeah. school. So he literally summoned my father. Okay. And the two of them conspired against me and took the decision that I probably should go home for a year and mm -hmm. then come back the next year. And when my father told me this, I said, no, there's no <laughs> way that I'm going, to do, I'm going to do what you people are saying, you know. Anyway, I insisted and I had my way at nine. Okay. So in, in your days in Mfansapem, later when you became a senior, you know, share some of those experiences well, with us. I'm know, sure you were kind of even, small. Even all. when I was a senior, I was very small. Um, and so I remember some Form 1 people would come into the school and, you know, when I would be going around with some of my seniors, especially seniors who like to bully young, the, young, young you know, seniors. and so on. And when they would see me as well in the group of seniors, I think some of them felt that this one should be bullied rather exactly. than us, you know. <laughs> and and, and in fact, I remember some names, but I won't tell them because <laughs> it, would be, it would be too embarrassing for them. You know, some, some of them you know from from one they were much bigger than me and they of thought course. they could bully me can you imagine you know can you imagine <laughs> can you imagine but but anyway it was it was all a, a good time mm. uh in 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 boarding in boarding school but yeah. but you know in boys school and all you know there are certain things that boys do i went to a girl's school st monica's but i know for boys school you know with a jama session and other yeah. stuff you do in your right, rooms right, and all right. you know well you know i was um a relatively quiet little boy in that sense mm. you know i i i must tell you that i wasn't one of those um students who would you know run off to the cinema and so on <laughs> in town you know and and i i i must make this confession today that there was one occasion when i got persuaded by some of my colleagues to break school rules and go to a cinema with them in town. Mm. And what I can't forget is that as soon as some of the other bad boys saw me there, they broke into cheers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, well, so you're also here with that. You remember the movie I you went remember, to watch? I, I know, I don't remember. <laughs> that didn't matter to us. What okay. mattered is that we were breaking were school out. rules. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that's what mattered. Right, so Fancy Pen and then University of Ghana, yes. then came an Oxford scholarship. Uh, it was a University of Ghana mm. scholarship to Oxford. Oh, wow. Yes, hey, it was wow. a University of Ghana scholarship. Uh, so, pursuing law and, as well? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's mm. where I did my master's. And, and you know, f to get a University of Ghana scholarship, guess who interviewed me personally? Mm. Professor Kwapong, Vice Chancellor wow. of the University, together wow. with a panel. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and you know, and, uh, indeed, indeed. And, and Professor Kwapong, I mean, it, it was not an easy interview. He really challenged me, but yeah. but I, I I love to be challenged. I think even even at eighteen, I love to be challenged. But what again is so memorable for me about Professor Kwapong? You know, I was being interviewed to go to Oxford. Mm. Professor Kwapong had set up a relationship between the University of Ghana. Um, law faculty mm. and the law faculty in Oxford. The chairman in the law faculty in Oxford was Peter Carter, okay. who was um, at that time the person that Professor Kwapong uh, worked with. And in the arrangements that were made by Professor Kwapong together with the dean of the law faculty in my final year, uh, Professor Simpson, who himself came from Oxford, mm. the person who was to be my tutor at Wardham College was the chairman of the Oxford Law Faculty. Wow. With whom <laughs> was, uh, you know, and, and that's why I'm saying that I am blessed. Extremely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, am, I am blessed beyond measure. And so I have to be praising God all the time. Of course, so now think you about understand. your first song. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, 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 you see, 
<laughs> you see, let me just finish that story. Uh -huh. So, I go to Oxford. Professor Kapong has given me the exactly. um, uh, scholarship. Yeah. He set it up. My tutor is Peter Carter at Wadham College. And, you know, I also had um, other younger tutors, uh, Ian Brownlee, famous international lawyer, and so on. And in those years in, in, in Oxford, again, by God's grace, I was um, uh, quite successful in a way that led me to become a fellow um, uh, at Corpus Christi College after, after being a student at Wadham. And when I think back on those years, what I'm proudest of mm -hmm. is the fact that the grounding that I had from simple schools in Adabraka and Akra in New Akra Town. New Town through to university in Ghana, yeah. those gave me a confidence to relate to people from all over the world yeah. at one of the most prestigious universities in the world. At one Talking of the about most confidence, you know, you challenge your teachers in Oxford in an exam. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that because that was like, well, yeah. I'm thinking, well, this guy, well, well, you know, <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, I had the confidence that if I saw in an exam paper as I did something that didn't seem, you know, quite appropriately expressed, I could call one of the invigilators and say, look, I mean, is this really what this is meant to be? No, and your case is actually you know, but, 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 you know, <laughs> I mean, I, as I say, I think that um, that all comes from the sort of mentoring, the sort of, mm. you know, uh, a relationship you've had with people who, you know, teach you to be confident, but they also teach you to be respectful yeah. right. of yeah. others who have gone ahead of you. I mean, I, 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 d I don't do this in uh, rude or you know in a way that dishonors the people and so on but is in a way that tries to use the knowledge that i've gained from them mm -hmm. um you know to interrogate the issue with them you right. know because that's that's <laughs> no, I mean, it, this is so inspirational you know? <laughs> that, that's exactly. it. it really it really you know? is it really is. i mean there's so mm -hmm. much more to learn from this conversation but we're going on a break when we come back we'll get to find out if not law what else he would have been. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV, brought to you by Vodafone. Together we can. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show. Our guest is lawyer Chachi Chikatel. We're really having a fun time exactly. here, talking about all the things you didn't know. So, you know, he is not a principal, you know, <laughs> like that, you know, but he also has a fun side. He's exactly. just a human being just yeah. like us. Yeah. And he's telling us a lot of things yeah. that we need to know. Mm -hmm. But so, you know, we can spend, I mean, days, years talking about you. I'm sure every day of your mm -hmm. life, you know, is a story that we can be inspired yeah. by. But let's look at Chachuche Kata, the father of Manifest. Do you listen to your son's music? Of course I do. Which one do you like? I like um, <laughs> Paimuka Makamaka. <laughs> Makamaka, that's you know? my yeah. favorite song. Oh, yeah. really? wow. <laughs> and that's a song of defiance too. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> but you know, I, yeah, he does a great job mm. with what he does. Yeah. And um, I, I, you know, the, the, I, I admire the way that rap musicians you know, do their lyrics and in different languages, and and I, I call him Ahmed, not manifest. Yeah, <laughs> Ahmed, of course. You, know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, I mean, his 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 way with words in different mm. languages and so on, and and I think you see that with some of his other yeah, peers also. Yeah. I think that's fantastic, and and we. We ought to be excited about all these talents that exactly. we have so around us. I, I, I don't know so. about you, but for <laughs> us, music lovers and you know people who follow him on social media and his works, people compare him, and I think all the time there's a comparison between Manifest, Manifest and Sarkodie. Do you listen I've, to Sarkodie's music? I've oh, you follow that I've, as well. I, I, yes, I, I know <laughs> that as well. But you're not going to draw me into any of these contests between... I'm, I'm between not. I'm only and asking and an innocent question. If you do listen to yes, Sarkodie as well. Listen. I listen to him as well, and I also see his... Uh, his, his, his adverts for... The highest, you know, the highest versus the God MC. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's why I'm saying I just... 
I'm excited with mm. the, 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 the word play, the, yeah. the, the lyrics and the way they turn them into me. Of course, they, they've done a, a thing together. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown paper bag Brown or paper something. Bag. No, yeah. you're a carrot. You're a carrot. You know, you're a carrot. Well, but if you had to give us some of your top five musicians, uh, no, 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 I'm not, you're not going to get me into that. You're not going to get me into top that. Top five <laughs> It doesn't matter yeah. the genre of music. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've heard me talk about, you know, my, my love for gospel yeah. yes. music and 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 you know the way that i've been inspired and music uh by people like danny has uh, has has ministered to me yeah. in, in certain times and i mean i'm moved I, on my last birthday uh, neo kind did a special rendition of mokobe okay mm. Uh, which he sent to me, and I'm looking forward to the July one, the new movie. Yeah, we are all looking forward <laughs> and, to it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm touched by that, but but I I'm also excited at how a song like that literally conquered the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. that song, I mean, is sung not just in in churches in in ghana and so on but it's all everywhere. around the world so can and, you give a line and, of Mokobe? And, i know you don't have a nice voice but no, now no, we are used to that no, no, but no, no, because no. that's what everybody knows Mokobe. everybody knows Mokobe. everybody knows Mokobe. Yeah. but i prefer to listen to its authentic rendition mm. by <laughs> neoka and i'm waiting for july one so don't okay. let me anticipate. july will soon come july one <laughs> july, will july soon one come. in fact i'm sure that when i'm listening to to him that day. Mm. That's when I'll be singing. So you can yeah. come and record me at home when I'm singing. <laughs> oh, that really? Yes, okay. You know, but 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 truly, I mean, people like him who have, you know, really. I mean, Diana Hamilton is another person yeah. whose recent song yeah. has really, you know, ministered to us um, because you know, grace yeah. is what it's all about. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And 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 I, I think that we all get lifted up by mm -hmm. by by that kind of um, ministration. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get into ranking musicians, but I've given you a sense of some of my favorite. Yeah. You know, but apart from gospel, in, 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 apart from in gospel, Ghana. do you listen to any other music? Oh, of course and maybe I apart do. Apart from listening I mean, to Makamaka, <laughs> Maka. do you listen to <laughs> any other one? Yes, maybe like I, Life or no, I, I do, I do, but I'm I'm not going to get into that because you know I know. I know the rivalries in the music scene, and I, I'm not going to get drawn <laughs> into that. It's not bad with I'm life. sorry, yeah. you will not get me into musical rivalries. No problem. <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk about the legal education in the country and what you make of it as it stands now. I mean, for the past two or three years, we've seen the issues that have come when students have had to write uh, the exam into law school and all the challenges that have come with it. Yes, a lot of challenges, um, which relates to what we were talking about earlier, perhaps. Many people are going into law school yeah. with aspirations to become lawyers. It looks like, you know, the authorities, and when you listen to some of the, um, you know, the past Chief Justice, yeah. the current Chief Justice, they sometimes they talk about limiting numbers. Exactly. It's like there's a fight between quantity and quality. Well, you can have a large quantity mm. all with quality. quality you yeah. can. It depends on how you manage it. Very so possible. I, I, yeah. I don't think that it should be a fight between quantity and quality. I think that what has been happening um, with trying to limit numbers sometimes leads to arbitrary cutoff points mm -hmm. that don't necessarily reflect a lack of quality. Right. I would like to see a situation, frankly, mm. in which there isn't so much of a preoccupation with law and entry into a legal profession mm. for the sake of going to court. Because, right. you know, many people use law and their knowledge of law. Not in, I don't go to court that often, frankly. Right. Many people use it for other things. I mean, the, the, the context actually in which... I use my law very effectively in this country it was in the context of oil and gas. My okay. work in GMPC yeah. was helped by my legal background, mm -hmm. my understanding of the issues, 
in terms of relationships with companies and so on, sure. but was absolutely uh, helped by being sure. a lawyer. And I know there are many other lawyers involved in corporate life and so on who are, you know, making a great contribution in that context. So perhaps we, we need to start broadening the outlook of what the end product is about. Mm -hmm. So that it's not just about people going to court, so people are thinking there are too many people in legal practice, uh, you know, there's not that much and so on. Because if we have a broader outlook, and, 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 and again, relating it to what I said earlier about other professions, mm -hmm. you see, law shouldn't be the only thing that young people aspire yeah. to venture into. So we need to have a broader national conversation about how we draw people into all these areas of professional life, mm -hmm. law, medicine, you know, engineering, whatever, you know, architect, you know, there, there are lots of things that young people should have an aspiration to, which can contribute immensely mm -hmm. to the development of the country. Yeah. And, and, and so I think that, that that is a conversation that needs to be had. I, I also believe that for many of the young people who are looking to get into the legal profession, who feel disappointed because of the numbers and so on and so forth, you know, sometimes you must look at obstacles that come in your path as opportunities for a new direction. Right. Because it may be that there is some other direction that could be available to them. Yeah. And that would actually be more suited to their talents. <laughs> well, so we've spoken about lawyer and everything. Now let's talk about being a husband, you know. So for women, we love the love matters and all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we never say that you have eyes for good stuff, you know. And, it's uh, right. <laughs> well, I, I, I am married very happily to mm -hmm. a wonderful wife, mm -hmm. Esther Koba. Yeah. And she retains her maiden name, by the way, <laughs> and that's good. Yeah. Women must be able to have their independent perspectives. She's a communication specialist, yeah. mm. and um, we have a wonderful relationship, which was also very important for me during some of my difficult and trying times. I mean, mm. I'm sure a lot of people know about the Free Chachu campaign, yeah. which she launched at the time that I was in prison and so on. So I am truly blessed in that uh, relationship. And, and uh, we, um, you know, we're, we're not as young as we, we used to be, but we are now blessed also with grandchildren who mm -hmm. Um, make life very exciting, uh, <laughs> a little bit strenuous sometimes. <laughs> Can imagine you chasing uh, but, them out. But, <laughs> but you know, I, you know, one of the things that again, I'm I'm thankful to to God for, um, even in a period like the COVID mm -hmm. period, when there were all these you know restrictions and so on. Um, one one of the joys uh, mm. for for us was really our grandchildren, mm. uh, because they could be part of our bubble, yeah. uh, within which you know they, they 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 stayed for long periods, and it was again very touching uh, in in many ways because, like you've been saying, perhaps people don't imagine that uh, lawyer Chachuchikata will be looking after grandchildren, grandchildren yeah. no, and no. running around and, <laughs> and, and, and even running. even when you are home, you are going to be <laughs> exactly. you know, and you know you are busy writing stuff and all that. Burned, you know, research you know. material. But, but you know, in that, in that period, I, I was really excited to, mm. be, to be taking care of them, especially the very young ones and mm. uh, being, being available for, for, for them as well and, and sometimes taking the burden a little bit from their parents. Right. Yeah. So that that's that's you know, been you know, an just, exciting just part. one I'm very yeah. inquisitive and you know, I like Justin, you know. <laughs> but, but how how did you meet? Just one line, you know, how did you meet? Was it through flowers or something? I don't know if you also love flowers because I know she really loves flowers. She does, <laughs> she does. But no, it wasn't it wasn't quite through flowers. It's a little less romantic than that. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> because, because, in fact, we had, you know, mutual family friends. Okay. 
through whom we met. And, and that's again, um, you know, a story for another occasion. But mm. <laughs> I mean, when I look back, these, these were friends, you know, whose, whose father had also been in the political life of this country, a very, you know, distinguished member of parliament and mm. so on. And I remember that the first time I ever met uh, um, Esther was actually at, 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 at the home celebrating uh, a birthday of, um, mm. the, uh, of, of these friends. And um, we didn't meet again for a long time. But I think it was more the song, the music. Oh, wow. Perhaps. <laughs> In fact, she, she likes to joke that I talked about being her music manager. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Which I don't quite remember, but I, she, that's probably true. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I think she sang on that occasion. Mm -hmm. And, and, and those are things that stay on my mind, just as I can remember Denzel and uh, Joe Metal singing yeah. at uh, Danny Nettis' funeral. Nettis funeral. So, so I think that is probably what caught my attention. It's always been the music you said, for you. It's always been, it's always been the said, music. You said you'd ask only one question. So yes, I'm yes, not that's it. Yes, yes, that's it. Then, uh, so, so, you know, Danny is not here with us anymore, mm -hmm. but I believe that wherever he is, he yeah. always um, looks down on us and smiles at us. Yeah. Danny is not here. Jometal is not here. Denzel is not here. But you have said that Mokobet did something awesome for yeah. you. So what about Neil Kai doing a line or two with Mokobet right now for you? <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Bless us. If I bless Uncle T. Exactly. Oh wow. Okay. So this is what I sent to him on his birthday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Akuti was so grateful that you could make time to join us on this show. I mean, <laughs> the fact that we called and you responded is, is actually a blessing for us. I mean, people have heard you in various interviews, but I don't think they've had this side. No, before. no. And that's what we do here on the Upside Down Show. I mean, we won't bring it like you're expecting it. We we'll turn it around. So Upside it's been down. good having you. It's, it's, it's a, been a great conversation, of course. All right, people, we'll have to wrap up. The show is brought to you by Vodafone. Together we can. My name is Nana Tufo. My name is Premier Dinyami. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that we'll always come 10 your Sunday nights upside down. Thank you very much, Nee. Thank you very much, Thank Uncle you. T. Thank you. 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 Thank you.